What's up, ladies and gentlemen? This is Jeff with the rest of the IDB crew. Today, we are going to talk about, well, Facebook and Instagram. That is probably the biggest news, the biggest tech news, I'd say, this year. What do you guys think? Uh, the world, the Twitter world seems to have gone upside down since uh, Mark Zuckerberg announced that he was buying um, Instagram for, for a billion dollars. Um, you probably saw that. Uh, you can see it in the comments on our post on IDB too, that people seem pretty upset about this move. Um, I kind of see why. Um, I don't really um, share this feeling. I probably couldn't care less. If anything, it's going to be good for Instagram. Um, what, what do you guys think? I think it's good for Instagram. I could see why people would be upset because Instagram is like its own little community and people feel, I guess, privileged to use that service. So I can see where they'd be upset in that regard. But for the people, you know, who are investing or who have invested in Instagram, it's great news for them. <laughs> They're sitting pretty right now. Yeah, the CEO is doing pretty good too. Huh? I think he, he cashed out like 400 million or something. That's 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 a pretty good <laughs> deal. That's a good yeah. payoff day. That's a good uh, payoff. <laughs> Not bad that's... for two years worth of work, huh? Mm-hmm. So I don't really know. I mean, are we in a, do you think we're in like a bubble right now? Is it? Does this? Is this the absolute confirmation that we're in a tech bubble? Oh yeah, I think that was confirmed with uh, Groupon's purchase or valuation uh, last year at close to two billion dollars. I think we're we're definitely in another tech bubble right now. Um, I I don't know. Like um, like in the case of Instagram, I I don't think it's related to to the tech bubble. If there is a tech bubble right now. I think it's just a way for Facebook um, to get a huge, hugely engaged uh, community of uh, people who use uh, an application exclusively on their smartphone. Because, you know, you can't use um, Instagram on the computer or anything or on your iPad. It's just like, you know, I mean, you can use it on your iPad, but it's just the iPhone app and the Android app. So you can only use this on a mobile device. And that's probably where so somewhere where um, Facebook is lacking traction. You know, they get their Facebook app, but um, the consensus is that it sucks. Um, and yeah, I think it's not that great considering the, the what Facebook has, like the, um, the the people they have and the money they have. I think they could do much better. Um, but also the engagement on 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 the Facebook app is not great compared to the desktop version. I think. And I think that uh, the purchase of Instagram is is meant to um, to enhance all that stuff. Um, so I don't think it's part of a tech. I mean, I, I think it's overpriced, like a billion dollars for a company that doesn't make one dollar in revenue. I think that's pretty overpriced. But um, I can see why Facebook would do that. And I don't think it's I don't think it's cons I wouldn't consider this part of a tech bubble really. I think it's the price, right? A billion dollars for, like Insane. you said, a, a company that has only been around for two years. It doesn't really have any kind of business model set up. I mean, you don't see advertisements in Instagram. I think the billion dollars is what I think made me relate it to, yeah, there's got to be some kind of tech bub bubble going on. I think in five years or I think five years back, there's no way this goes for a billion dollars, maybe half that, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I think I mean I think Facebook's motives for buying Instagram is kind of a two two part deal. Uh, last summer, I don't know if you guys remember this, but MG Siegler leaked out some information about a photo app. You guys remember that at all? Like a Facebook was working on like a standalone photo app that created yes. like this. Yes. Yeah, I think you know we still haven't seen anything of that, and I think maybe they were running into walls, or maybe they're trying to come up with their own you know unique way to share photos or take photos, and maybe they're running into a wall, and then they see this you know Instagram who's having no problem doing it at all, right, with over thirty million um, users, so they were like, hey, let's snatch them up, and let's combine that, and I bet we'll see that integrated. You know, maybe Instagram will stay a st standalone app. But I bet we'll see it integrated into Facebook uh, probably in the next six months, maybe a year. For a billion dollars, you better believe it. It's definitely, I mean, they're going to want to be more hands-on than just leaving it alone and making it a standalone. 
app. I, I don't see that happening at all. Now, what about this this AT and T unlock? Have you guys done that yet? I tried. They they, they <laughs> would not Sebastian let me do try. it. <laughs> How was your uh, experience, Sebastian? I know I saw you post a tweet on that. Uh, yeah, funny. That, that's funny because I I started uh, the process, the you know unlocking process, getting in touch with AT and T, and before even like getting to my computer, I was like, this is gonna be trouble. Like, they're <laughs> gonna give me they're gonna give me a hard time. And usually, you know what people always <laughs> talk smack about AT and T. I like AT and T a lot. Like they've always been super nice to me. Uh, they take care of my stuff when I have problems. Uh, the service is pretty good where I am. So I, I really rarely, if ever, talk crap about AT and T, um, except yesterday. So it started pretty bad. I had a bad feeling about it. And um, following your post, Jeff, I went, um, I went online and started chatting with someone instead of calling them directly. I said, okay, I'm gonna chat with them. At least if I have to wait, I'll be able to do something else, you know, on my computer or something. So I ch- I waited probably 10, 15 minutes to chat with uh, Barbara Robbins. Uh, not to name her. I think I just did, though. <laughs> um, and uh, sh- so I explained to her that I want to unlock my phone. And of course, she's got this copy-paste resp- reply. Great, you know, like I'm going to need a few, a few information, a little information from you. And I have my IMEI ready co- to copy-paste. And I just copy-paste it. And I- I'm hoping that it's going to go through. And she says, well, um, because you bought your phone <laughs> off contract in 2010, um, I need to see the receipt for the phone. So I'm like, okay, you need to see the receipt. Can't you see in your system that I bought this phone off contract because I paid you the full price, which I think was $700. Um, she said, no, we can't see this. I'm like, okay, let me go to Apple website and I'm going to put out the order. I go to Apple's website and you can't pull anything over 90 days or something like this. So I'm like, okay, I can't find it. And I finally, I go to Gmail, I do a search, I finally find the receipt. I uh, take a screenshot, which I uh, upload um, online. I copy paste the link. I paste the link to the chat window to the AT&T rep. And I said, hey, this is the receipt. Here it is. You get the receipt number, my name on it, everything you need to know. And she said that she couldn't help me, that um, I would need to send a fax to the support team or some kind of team uh, with my receipt, uh, and they would be able to take care of uh, my problem. Uh, Of course, I don't have a fax machine. um, Right, it's not 1990. Yeah, I know. I, 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 I was about to lose it and like say things like that, you know, and I was like, keep it quiet, Sebastian. You're not going to get but anything knew. out of it. I kind of I, I did, though, at some point. I think I said, oh, AT&T, you make my life miserable all the time. She didn't pick it up. She probably noticed and she didn't say anything about it because she's trained. But you, Sebastian, you have to admit, you knew going into this that this was going to happen. Uh, well, I, I, I knew I would have problems, but I didn't know, like, I wouldn't be able to make it happen you know i was like okay this is gonna happen you know like worst case scenario like they got my phone number they got my name i can give them the last four digits of my social security they know it's me um but no it didn't so i you know i was like but can't you make an effort you know because you have my information here can you make an effort and make it happen this one time? And she said, no, you really have to fax this thing. We have a process in place and you really have to fax this over to whoever, you know, I can give you the number. Thank you very much. Goodbye. And I just like canceled the, <laughs> the chat window and I went straight to Twitter and um, whined about it a little bit, which made me feel better. Didn't change a single thing about my situation, but it made me feel better a little bit. Um, and so did you go in store? Well, I'm probably going to go in store. Um, this, I, I sent a tweet to um, at at and Customer Care. Um, they've helped me a lot in the past. They've been like over nice for me. Um, and I sent her a tweet saying, hey, can you help me out with this? And she sent me an email address at someone at at and And she said, okay, email this guy and uh, he should be able to take care of you. I emailed the guy this morning. I haven't heard back from him, but tomorrow morning when I go to my Starbucks, um, I'll go to the AT&T store, which is right next, right next to Starbucks, and um, I'll print out my receipt, I'll bring my iPhone, I'll bring everything they need, uh, I'll bring the 
last two years of receipts, of credit card receipts I have just in case I need something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but hopefully tomorrow I will have, um, I will have made the first step to unlock my iPhone 4. Awesome. Yeah. You'll need that when you go to, go to France. Yeah, yeah. Well, really helpful. Yeah, and you know what? I was like, maybe I should even ask AT&T if they want to unlock my iPhone 4S, which is on the contract, this one. Um, so I'll try to be like, to be all nice and sweet to, uh, <laughs> to the guy or the girl over there and see if uh, he can, they can unlock my iPhone 4S as well. I mean, really, like, I, I don't even want to leave AT&T, you know, like, just unlock the phone so I can go to France and instead of using my iPhone 4, I can use my iPhone 4S. Yeah. Um, or worst case scenario, I can still use um, one of the JV SIM or something, you know, like some kind of uh, SIM interposer or something like that. Because I want to use my 4S, I don't want to use my 4. Yeah, well, no one wants to use old phones, and that brings us right into the iPhone 5, the rumors today. What do you guys think about this supposed A5X chip being in the iPhone 5, the one gigabyte of RAM? I I mean, those are pretty much obvious things. I don't think we'll see that A5X chip in its current form right now, though. What do you think? Yeah, um, I think you're right. I think it'll be, uh, like you wrote earlier, um, Jeff, I don't think it's going to be the A6. I don't think it's going to be the quad-core processor. I think between adding that and possibly a bigger screen and then, you know, obviously LTE, I don't think that this thing's gonna have the battery life to support a full quad core processor. So I think we'll see, you know, some kind of modified A5X. Right. right. I don't think it's gonna. It doesn't need that quad graphics. It it probably doesn't. You know, especially as, as smooth as iOS is. Anyways, I mean, yeah, you see quad core processors on like an Android device, but I guarantee, even just scrolling through the apps or scrolling between home screens, it'll still lag. There's just yeah. something not there between the software and the hardware that's been there in the iPhone since day one. Yeah, yeah. And I think it'll be just like the Apple TV, which was kind of surprising. The, the Apple TV 3 was a modified A5. It's actually a single core chip. So it'll be something of the sort like that. It'll just be a modified A5X, more than likely, unless Apple decides to you know just go all out and hit us with the A6 or whatnot. Yeah, the, the rumors don't just don't that, excite don't me that much. It's it's just like, yeah, we know iPhone's going to be released. Big deal. See, I'm no I'm kind of different actually, especially this year. I think this year of all years is, you know, um is the year to get excited, right? Because the the iPhone 4 design, the the same design they use in the 4S, it's been around for 2 years. Okay? And uh Apple's got more competition than it's ever seen before, and it really needs to come out with something big. I don't think we'll see another, you know, uh, incarnate of the iPhone 4. I think we see something completely different. I think that, I mean, we've heard a bunch of different rumors, right? Aluminum backing or possibly another glass backing, but I would not be surprised at all if this is the year that they bumped the screen size a little bit and kind of wowed us with something completely different. Yeah, I think it will, it will definitely see something Especially yeah. when you consider, if you consider the last, you know, just in the last three months of 2011, they sold 40 million iPhones and uh, they've got to continue to grow, right? They've got to try to do better than that this, this year around. So they've got to do something above and beyond what they've been doing to reach that audience. Right. Well, we'll see. Hopefully, I don't know. They're saying fall 2012. Yeah, we'll I'm pretty... Till. I'm pretty locked on that date, actually. Yeah. It's got to be fall. You wouldn't... To go summer would mean that you're eliminating 90% of the people that bought iPhone 4S that can't afford to spend full retail. Yeah, I think so, we'll... You know, well, with AT&T, at one year, I'm able to upgrade. I've been able to do that since I bought the original iPhone. They let you upgrade every 12 months, right? right. So Apple's got to at least wait that long. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Now, let's turn turn the page a little bit. Let's talk about some jailbreak news. What, what about the um, the iPad 3 jailbreak? Now, granted, the iPad 3 just came out, and it's the, the jailbreak. Supposedly, there's a couple of jailbreaks out there. First of all, do you even care about this jailbreak? And um, number two, do you when do you think we'll see it? I don't. I, I mean, I don't care about the jailbreak. I've got uh, three iPads. Uh, two that are jailbreakable and uh i don't i don't even remember last time i jailbroke an ipad uh it's just to me like 
and again, it's just to me. Uh, I understand that you guys may have different opinions, but to me, there's no reason for what I do with an iPad to jailbreak it. Um, the Basically, the only things I do with an iPad is email, Twitter, uh, news reading, and um, light, you know, web browsing. That's basically all I do. And really, like, 90% of it is probably just reading the news on... on um, uh, Flipboard or Reader or something. So to me, there is like no real motivation to jailbreak my iPad. And, um, you know, it's, it's great if there's a jailbreak for the iPad 3. If not, um, it's not going to keep me up at night or anything. Um, yeah. What, what about you guys? I kind of feel the same way. I mean, as I don't know. It's just there's nothing that I can think of that my iPad can't do right now that a jailbreak broken iPad will be able to do. I mean, there's just nothing out there that's that appealing. It's not like the iPhone where there's just so many different tweaks and apps that make the experience better. With the iPad, it's I don't use the iPad enough, first of all, to even really worry about a jailbreak that much. So uh, that's probably my main reason. If it happens, I'll definitely do it, but it's not something I'm like crying about. Yeah, I I gotta say, I'm not really missing it on my iPad 3 at all either. Uh, my iPhone 4S is obviously jailbroken, as is my older iPhone 4, but I think a big reason I have those jailbroken is for the notification center. You know, I have SB settings kind of, I have toggles, SB settings toggles in my notification center for quick Bluetooth on and off and things like that. That's one um, thing I, I would like, though. That If there's one thing that I would appreciate with a uh, jailbroken uh, iPad is to quickly turn off like personal hotspot quickly enable disable lte to save battery life things like that but other than that no it's not a big deal right and that's kind of what i was getting to is i would love to have maybe some sp settings some different toggles on the ipad but other than that i'm just i'm not in the notification center ever i i mean my usage is a lot like sebastian just described where i'm all i'm doing is you know uh reading the news on pulse newsreader or flipboard or browsing Twitter through Tweetbot, you know, and all of these are obviously they're in the app store. There's not much I need to do that would require a jailbreak. Right. Yeah. I, I, I honestly can't even remember the last time I used Notification Center on my iPad. It's just, it seems like an afterthought. It's, I don't like how it only takes up just a little portion of the screen. It just looks weird. I don't know about you guys, but I think it. I find it useless. Uh, but also, again, my usage of the iPad or even the iPhone makes it kind of useless to me because I don't ha I don't use any notifications. Um, the only notifications I have on my iPhone are for our text messages. That's the only one that's actually going to pop up while I'm lying. And I also have chess with friends because I play chess with my <laughs> with my cousin and I want to be on top of it when he, he plays he plays a move or something. So that's two notifications really. I mean. Text message is not really a notification. It's just a notification in itself. Um, and chess with friends, that's all. Like, I do not want, like, email or notifications. My notification, I don't want any notifications because, you know, my life is disrupted enough with everything around me all the time. I don't need, you know, a disruption again when someone likes a post on Facebook or something like that. So, <laughs> it's so annoying to get that. I hate that so much. Yeah, I know. It is. And, uh, but it seems like when I talk, like when I see my wife, for example, like she has like a gazillion notifications all the time on her phone. Like at night, even at night, her iPad is downstairs and I can hear like the Facebook notifications, like seriously, like every like 30 minutes or so she's, she gets a notification on Facebook because bloop, bloop. I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm like, aren't you annoyed by all these things? And she doesn't even, like, notice, you know, like, she doesn't realize that she gets like, tons <laughs> of notifications. And I, I, I assume most people are like this, you know. But um, her notifications bother me. That's how much I don't like notifications. Yeah, I, I, well, imagine having, okay, I have how many iPads? Two iPads, I have iPod Touch, two, three iPhones, and they're all synced to um, iCloud. Mm -hmm. So... I mean, I get one text message and then you hear five tones go off. It's, I, I don't know. That's kind of annoying too. I, I have this problem with um, 
calendar alerts, you know, like my calendars are all synced together. So if one rings, I've got like four iPhones and three <laughs> iPads or like I'm exaggerating. I think there's like only three iPhones and two iPads that ring for, for calendar alerts. So it's like a little crazy every time. You know what issue. Apple should do? Apple should, they should have a, a feature where where your your device notices whether or not it's within the range of another device, like use GPS. And if they're all within like, you know, a foot of each other or two feet, then only one device sounds a notification. How do you, Dude, it's, a, cool. it's, it's a good idea, but how do you select the one device that's going to ring? Well, you can set a priority. Okay. And, there you uh, go. Like the settings. All right. I like this. And if it's if it detects other devices within range, then it mutes those. I like yeah, that only, idea. Yeah, only one device goes off. I think that should definitely be because it's so annoying to get like, dun, 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 dun. <laughs> especially when people on YouTube have my <laughs> my iMessage address and they're just sending me people from India or China <laughs> or whatever are sending me messages at all times of the day. Unlock my iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Speaking of the iPad three, um, we talking about. I know Sebastian, you don't have an LTE enabled I- iPad. No. Cody, do you? No, nope, I'm at home too much to need to need Dude, LTE. I'm telling you, this is awesome. <laughs> you guys, you're missing it. Well, here's the yourself. deal. My girlfriend has a uh, through her work phone. She has a LTE handset, the Razer Max, and right. it. Uh, I, I can use it as a hotspot anytime I want to. Yeah, it's just cool not to have to actually go in and even like configure the hotspot. Like, Agreed. Just knowing it's always on is just so awesome. It's just it's a liberating feeling. I can't describe it. I never thought <laughs> he said I would. It's liberating. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought I'd actually use it or want it, but I don't mind paying you know thirty bucks a month. So is it really that fast? It's that fast. I mean, oh, it's, it's LTE is ridiculous. It's insane. Fast. I mean, it's faster than my home broadband. That sounds Seriously. insane, yeah. It, it, the upload is like 10 times faster than my home broadband. I could probably upload a YouTube video where it would take me maybe 15 minutes to do so at home in like two minutes. So do you actually use it or like us, you're most of the time at home and you have like this amazing power in your hands, but you don't use it because you're home all the time? Well, I don't use it at home, but when I'm out, I mean, it, it's, it's really nice to have that, that speed you know, I, it's to the point where like my phone is annoying when I'm using it out outside. The 3G is so slow, like, you notice it that much. Oh. It's a big, it's a huge difference. So um, yeah, I think the um, the premium price premium was worth it for me personally. But I don't know. It's just one of those things you have to try to and you to appreciate. But it's like getting you ever go to like a, a chiropractor or a massage therapist. Yes. It's like if you never get before, a massage yeah. before, then you you don't know what you're missing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but then now you feel like you need one every just so often. So it's the same thing with the with the LTE, I guess. <laughs> I give you a seven for that analogy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm reaching, man. I'm reaching. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk about a couple of jailbreak tweaks of the week. Uh, Fusion. Thoughts on Fusion. It is the uh, Facebook, uh, you know, iOS 5 integration with the Twitter app or the Twitter integration. What do you guys think about that? I have not um, downloaded it yet. I watched your video, uh, which was great as usual, by the way. Um, Thank you. And this is a great tweak. Uh, I've always wanted this. I've always wanted the same um, uh, Facebook integration at the same level as a Twitter integration into iOS. Meaning, like, I can go into my photo app and send any picture directly to Facebook without having to go through loops and hoops and how do you say through hoops and stuff? I don't know. I don't know. Jump how through hoops. Jump through hoops. Thank you. <laughs> um, so this this was this is this is great. Um, now, like I told you yesterday, Jeff, I was talking with for a while with Filippo Bigaretto um, about like releasing one of his application, and I. I know for a fact that he's been working a lot on bringing Facebook uh, integration into iOS at the same level as, uh, as Twitter. Um, so I haven't talked to him, but uh, I'm sure he feels uh, he must be like a little depressed to, <laughs> to, to, have, Sorry, to, have done, to have done all this work and, you know, like seeing someone else um, 
reap the profits of it. So, um, but it's fair game, you know what? Uh, so I'm definitely gonna give a try to this app, and I think it's gonna be more than a try because I like to share pi uh, f uh, pictures to Facebook, and this is definitely gonna make my life much much easier than pulling out the Facebook app and clicking upload and all that stuff. And right. uh, and then when I saw, you know what what made me really think you were gonna love it? No. When I saw they had MySpace integration. <laughs> I thought that's Sebastian. He's gonna love this app. I so know. I that. that reminds me. I need to go check out my MySpace account. I don't know what's going on over there. For all I know, like there might be someone who uh, took over my account or something. <laughs> what about um? What is it? Curio Curiosa? Curiosa? Here's, that week? Yeah. Here's my thing. What's the difference between in Curioso? It's that uh, it gives you updates. Like it gives you notification banners when. A new Cydia update for one of your packages is available, right? Yeah. What's the difference between that and like, uh, what was it, a APT or? Update. I don't, I heard that this actually works with third-party repos as well. I don't really know, okay. to be honest with you. It's very similar. I think this one's a little more, this one has a lot more options. I know that for a fact. There's a lot more options. And it's just, it's Ryan Patrick. I mean, this yeah. dude is like one of the best jailbreak developers ever no so. i agree i agree when you download something from like a well-known uh developer like ryan petridge like you know it's gonna work you have that certain level of comfortability that you know it's not gonna cause problems with other apps yeah. i mean i know i know this is still in beta but it's been working like a charm for me so uh, just <laughs> just to go off topic i just went to uh my old myspace page and uh <laughs> The last comment posted was two years ago, mind you. Wow. And I see that I still have 53 friends over there. Well, speaking of that, maybe Sebastian wants to um, terrorize the industry with his likes and gripes of the week. Well, likes. I don't, like I told you, I don't have any likes or gripes. I was like mostly out uh, for the week because it was my uh, first wedding anniversary. And that was great. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Rats. Thank you. I didn't do much all week and uh, spent a lot of time with my wife and my uh, baby Chloe. Um, so I don't know what, um, I don't have any gripes really, uh, but I have a life. Just AT&T. Well, AT this was a major gripe, but I think we've covered this. Um, yeah. And I think eventually it's gonna, it's gonna be okay, hopefully. Um, I do have a like though, and it's for the people at iCarbons.com. Um, they do uh, skins for iPhone, iPad, computers, pretty much everything you need. Um, and they are a sponsor at, for the Worldwide Jailbreak Convention, just like us. And uh, I got in touch with them a few weeks ago and we started chatting on Twitter and they sent us these skins that you guys probably received too for, the, uh, the, for Jailbreak Con. I don't know if you put yeah. them on your iPhone. Did you put them on your iPhone? Uh, no, I haven't. I did. I, I put, did. I received it, and it looks awesome. But I have not applied it yet. Yeah, I I, I applied it on my iPhone, and I kind of messed it up. It doesn't look great. Um, but uh, but the other day I was uh, tweeting that I was you know, looking for uh, a back uh, shield, a back cover for my iPhone, my, my iPad three. You know, I I usually don't like I don't like cases for sure because they're too bulky, and especially on an iPad, it's too much. Um, but I was looking for some kind of invisible shield to put in the back so I can, you know, put my iPad on my coffee table without fear of uh, scratching it or anything. And, uh, this girl, Rosa from iCarbons.com said, Hey, you know what? Uh, you are a sponsor for, uh, for Jailbreak Con and we are a sponsor too. Um, why don't you pick a skin from our site and I'll send it to you? And I was like, Oh, great. Thank you so much. And they sent me this skin uh, for iPad 3, which I think I posted a picture uh, on yeah, Twitter, uh, on Instagram <laughs> to... Uh, we'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely going to do a review of it too, uh, to give these guys a little coverage. Uh, great skin. I love it. Like, I mean, you know, like there's only that much you can do with a skin, you know, so I'm not going to like uh, praise it for an hour, but like great quality, super easy to set up. Um, beautiful. Oh, so you already applied it? Oh yeah, oh yeah, I totally applied it. I, I, did you have to use like a, a hair dryer or something? Yes, I did for the corners. Uh, I kind of messed up a corner, uh, and then I removed, I peeled it off again, and like 
uh, use the hairdryer a little more, and then it was okay. I totally fixed it, and you could you couldn't see how I messed up in the first place. Um, but they had a great video installation installation video to show you what to do and stuff. So I watched this, and uh, in two minutes, really, it was on. It was like super simple. I applied the skin, and I was like, okay, a good test of my skills to apply a skin will be if the Apple logo fit, because there's a little cutoff for the Apple logo on the back of the of the, of the iPad, and it fit like perfectly. Like, and when I say perfectly, I mean like perfect. I was like, oh my god, I did good. And then I covered <laughs> this. I covered this little Apple logo with different um, uh, skin thing they give you to. Uh, so it just looks gorgeous and looks so cool that when I went to Starbucks this weekend. I was totally showing off my iPad, the back of my iPad. Like I was like flashing it. You look, let's see how people looked at it. <laughs> and there are a couple of people who asked me. I was like, "Oh, this is very nice and stuff." And where did you get this? And I tell them when I got it. But you know, they probably don't remember five minutes later. But it doesn't matter. A um, couple of friends too, came to my to the house and was like, "Wow, this is beautiful. Like, how, is this is this a, a different backing or is this a sticker? What is this?" And um, so I. I tell them where I got it and how it works and stuff. And uh, I, I think a few of my friends are going to buy that stuff. Isn't it like a wood grain kind of looking? Yeah, it, it does. If I recall. Yes. it's. Uh, I think they call it dark wood on their uh, website. And uh, if you look at it from like a, a f- uh, from a couple of feet away or something, you would think it's wood. Like it's really? just, yeah. Well, obviously, if you pick it up and you touch it, uh, you figure out it's just vinyl or plasticky something um but yeah great quality um super easy install you don't have to deal with the like on the, with the invisible shield that you have to spray a solution and stuff and apply the thing and lo- use a squeegee to remove the bubbles it's just like a mess like it's a terrible really? mess this like it's clean like i was on my desk there is no like application solution to apply or anything like this it's just like super clean done in two minutes um so yeah, if you guys are in the market for a uh, for a skin, you should definitely give uh, these guys a try. Uh, plus, from what I can tell, it's probably pretty inexpensive. I think it's twenty bucks for an iPad skin or something like this. You, you use a smart cover, right? Uh, I do. I do sometimes, but I mostly don't because I'm home all the time. So yeah. I don't really use this. If I'm traveling, you know, I might, or if I go to Starbucks and I know I want to type something. I'm going to bring the smart cover so I can like, you know, fold it and make like a nice little elevation at the back to make it easier to tap, to type. Yeah. But uh, it, the, this uh, iCarbon skin works good with the, um, uh, the dumb cover, the smart cover. Uh, so if... Uh, I actually used to hate on the smart cover. I used to think it was one of the dumbest things ever, but I actually got one and used it and I really, really like it. Yeah, what what do uh, it's you? It's kind of weird. What do you use it for? Like, what's your main usage of the? the Just smart- protection. I'm always throwing my iPad in my bag, my messenger bag, and you know, you know, going out the door. And I just know for a fact that it's going to be protected. I also use like a little plastic shell on the back. It's really, really, really thin. Um, That's the same just, setup I got actually. I just bought yeah. both actually last weekend from uh, I think it's from like Best Buy or something. But it's like a Griffin, like clear, really thin yeah, it's shell clear. on the back. So it almost looks like it's just your iPad. It's a really thin shell, and then it works great with the smart cover. I have the leather smart cover, and um, I don't know. It just looks really classy. Yeah, I I got the exact same setup. I'm actually pretty happy with it, too. I use the – I would say I use the smart cover more for a stand just when I'm, like, looking through Twitter or something like that, especially with TweetBot's, uh, like, streaming feature, right? So you can just sit there and watch (laughs) – you can just sit there and watch uh, your Twitter stream go by – but uh, I use it for a stand, I think, mostly, more than I use it for protection. Yeah, and it's nice to just be able to, like, sit your iPad down like a normal, like, everyday, like, a plate or something. Just to sit it down, like, bam. You don't have to worry about it getting scratched or anything like that. I get not- See, I get nervous about the smart cover scratching, though. I think I've read that where, like, on the hinges, right, where you're, where you're kind of going back and forth on the uh-huh. metal hinges that are touching the iPad. yeah. I get nervous about that causing scratches over time. I'm going to have to keep an eye on it. I'm almost to the point where I don't even care. If it gets a little scratch, you know, I just want to use it. And I've always <laughs> been so, like, particular. Oh, I don't want to scratch my device. But now I just, like, bam. Well, if you don't care if it scratches, why do you have any protection? Just well, go I and... care a little bit. 
<laughs> <laughs> There's not that much. Okay, folks. Well, um, anything else? What? Anything else going on? That you want to talk about? Um, no, I don't I know, think so. This is our first podcast, and this is um, we still don't have an official name yet. <laughs> it's, I like to call it the IDB show. The what IDB show. That's not a bad, you know, especially if we can't think of anything else. That's not, I wouldn't hate that. Sh- I think it's better than to me, IDB sh- cast. Yeah, I don't know. To me, show makes it sound like the Muppet Video. show, you know, like <laughs> like people are like, jumping around and like, I don't know, make cracking jokes and stuff like that. Like the Chappelle I just don't show. Use that's, cast. That's, what I use, that's what I hear when you say show. I hear Chappelle show, Muppet show. No, no <laughs> cast, man. Yeah. When I think of cast, I think of someone's broken arm. Or, yeah, or the hundred other podcasts out there that yeah, cast in it. Yeah, it's just like, I want something original. <laughs> well, aren't they like a bunch of podcasts that are called the podcast whatever show or something? Yeah. So, I mean, like, whatever you use, you know? Like what, what about you show. guys? What about you guys, the listeners? Do you have any suggestions? If, if so, leave us a comment and let us know what you think. What should we call the show? The Three Amigos? <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. <laughs> I'd be all right with that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what people say. What do you guys say? You just we'll see. We we'll see if even people listen to this, right? I think I think we're gonna be surprised. You know, I think the the number one spot is right for the taking. Yeah. So hey, ten bucks. Ten bucks. Say commenters call it uh, Jeff's show. No. <laughs> <laughs> it should just be Jeff's show, right? It was just him talking. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we appreciate you guys listening to our first official unnamed as of yet podcast. This is Jeff with Sebastian and Cody. Sayonara. Au revoir. Sayonara. (laughs) Later, guys.